Welcome to our Section 9 Functions Memory Palace Walkthrough. As always, consider these Memory Palace section wrap-up videos to be 100% optional. If they work for you, great. If not, feel free to skip them. We started by watching the pain firsthand as Toucan Sam lost his battle with diabetes as a result of an uncontrollable need to play beer pong. And then we watched the unfolding of five fantastic superheroes who, after saving Toucan Sam at the last second, battled internally amongst themselves and eventually were whittled down to the Fantastic Four. And after those tensions settled, we met a pair of sloths who didn't let their slow arms stop them from playing beer pong as the renegade fifth member of the Fantastic Four, who first looked like she was cast away, is so smart on her own, she engineered an ingenious ping pong ball catapult that was made all out of spoons for these sloths so that they could get their beer pong on. And then we were off to watch a couple of pranksters get into trouble. We knew it was coming when we first met that Jack in the Box and he teamed up with the Cat Litter Box to pull off that epic prank. Trouble was just around the corner. After that, our theme changed as we watched in wonder as an animator who was born colorblind and spent most of his life sitting on an old rocking chair drawing black and white outlines found a magical abandoned gas generator that when powering his trusty lamp would show everything in wonderful, vivid color for him. It was amazing. And then we ended with a final story about a dog who finally fulfilled his lifelong dream of catching his tail, only to realize that he had locked himself around a yield sign when he caught it. I know. But by creating this donut shape around the pole, he was stuck. The entire day, he didn't let go and he didn't get free until he finally fell asleep and an unknown miracle occurred when he woke up without the tail in his mouth anymore. So now, get ready to continue our amazing adventure as we explore more of our Python memory palace. I want to tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was five high school aged gas pumps and they started a band. They were known as the Gas Pump Rockers. And they were so nervous for their very first gig that happened on this stage. For the entire year throughout their high school, they practiced every single day after school. And they finally got one song down exactly how they wanted it. And they said, this is the song. We're going to play it for the whole school. And it's going to feel amazing. And when the day finally came, all five of them stood there. The bassist put his foot up on the amp, and they play their guitar with like a hosey arm that's like the gas pump hose arm, you know? And they were looking out, and everyone's, you know, thinking about whether they should cheer him on or not. And they go to hit the first drum hit, and all of a sudden the power goes out, and nobody can hear their rip-roaring electric guitar. So they huddle around, and they say, oh, no, we can't ruin this. So one of them says, all right, I'm just going to play my acoustic. And the rest of the guys said, all right, that's fine. You know, even if there's not a role for all of us, we're just going to stand here and support you. And the audience found that unity, that care that they had for one another, so emotional and so amazing that they danced their hearts out. And it was the best moment ever. And the gas pump rockers went on from that point because of the confidence to become bigger than the Beatles and made millions and millions and millions of people happy. And the lead singer was so excited afterwards, he went over to a phone booth that was nearby and he wanted to call his mom, but was in for a big surprise when he opened the door. Now, once upon a time, right over here, there was an incredible spaceship called the TARDIS and it looked just like a phone booth. And after the gas pump rockers were done, the lead guitarist went over to make a call. He wanted to call his mom, but when he opened the door, the doctor, Doctor Who, popped out. And he said, oh man, I need to tune my ship to the right polarity because I need to save a baby chipmunk. The guitarist, of course, was confused but wanted to help. And he said, well, what, what can I do to help you tune the right polarity for your spaceship? And he said, does that guitar have a, a C major chord? And the gas pump said, it sure does. But I don't have any power to power my electric guitar. 
So the doctor said, that's not a problem. And he whipped up a little gadget and he plugged the guitar into it and said, now, gas pump rocker, can you strum your guitar at a C major? And he said, yes, I will. And he strummed it. And the doctor was able to tune the ship to exactly the frequency that he needed to go save the squirrel. He shaked his hand and said, thank you. You have done an amazing thing for a squirrel that you'll never meet. And then he hopped back into his spaceship, into the TARDIS, and he zipped away. The audience was so excited about all of this, they started dancing like crazy. The band, of course, loved all the dancing. But the managers, the greedy managers of the band, looked at the audience and it got them thinking greedy thoughts. Oh man, words can't even like do justice for how incredible this dancing was. Right over here, everyone would be in these perfectly circular groups doing Dutch dancing, and they were just exactly in rhythm, lifting their legs and their you know wooden shoes hitting the floor all at the exact same time. And you didn't even have to know Dutch dancing. You would just pick it up and it would automatically control you. Like the music would just automatically take over your soul. It was like being hypnotized, but only your legs were hypnotized your legs in your dancing anything that was involved in dancing was hypnotized but not your head but you couldn't follow the group without wooden clogs so the band was really smart and they provided the clogs there so you didn't even need to bring those and that was a real smart business move that's what really set this whole thing apart and that is how amazing the gas pump rockers are if you see them live but little did they know trouble was brewing because right over here these four hungry, hungry hippos were managing the band, and they're a very greedy, sellout, jerk kind of hippos, and they and they needed <laughs> and they needed they needed marbles to steal, because that's what they do is they steal every marble they can, and they never work as a team. And guess what happened? No marbles came, and they all starved to death. Now the band manages itself on Facebook. And like I said before, they're bigger than the Beatles. So how does that feel, you stupid hippos? Now come on over to this area because this was a spaceship landing site that I want to tell you about. Over here, a group of Russian nesting dolls came to watch as the Apollo 11 space capsule landed safe and missed the ocean by quite a ways. That's why I ended up here in Vegas. And they felt pretty nostalgic because this entire family of Russian nesting dolls worked for the Russian space program. It was in their DNA. These were all people who loved space and the father and mother both worked on the Russian space program and then the daughters and the daughter's daughters and the kids and however you think about a family of Russian nesting dolls, they were all space fans. And when this Apollo 11 space capsule landed, a bunch of Americans came and they rushed over to pull the door off of it. They were watching because it's so exciting whenever something comes back from space, but none of the Americans could get the door open. They had a machine that was meant to break the hatch, but it wasn't powerful enough. They must have miscalculated how much strength they need. But these noble Russians, even though normally a Russian space program wouldn't help the US, they said, we know you've got astronauts in there and we want to use a special battery that we developed. It's called the Microverse battery and it's from the TV show Rick and Morty. It has an entire universe inside of it with a civilization that's kind of questionably slaves that makes power and you can use it to power that machine and get all of your Americans outside of the Apollo 11 rocket. And in an amazing moment of peace, the Americans and the Russians were one, united in saving some humans, getting them out of this capsule. And they did. They worked together and they saved the people that were inside the rocket. And the Americans were so happy they gave him a cake. And it was decorated like Rick and Morty's face. It was a great moment of unity. Stronger together. Finn. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.